All right, I've had a few people asking me about a DaVinci Resolve feature that I've used in some of my previous videos, specifically the ones where I talk about color grading, and that feature is color grading versions. So I want to quickly go over how they work, as well as why they can be useful whenever you're editing something, but you want to experiment with your color grade. So let's say we want to try out a few different color grades for this clip. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it from S-Log into Rec. 709 using the RE Neutral Phantom LUT. I've talked about phantom LUTs a lot before because I really like them and I use them all the time. And there's a video on my channel that talks about them a lot more in depth that you can check out if you're interested. I'm going to name this node LUT to keep track of everything a bit easier. And I'm going to create two extra nodes before that. This second node here, I'm going to name exposure and I'm going to go into the HDR wheels. I'm going to map them to the correct color space, which in this case is S-Log3, S-Gamut 3 dot Cine. And now I can drop the exposure by let's say one stop. I also think I can go into the primaries and increase the contrast a bit. And now in this first node here, I'm going to use the primaries again, and I'm going to drag the offset down a bit in order to cool off the white balance. And I'm going to go ahead and call this node white balance to keep track of it. And now after this LUT node, I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to go into the new color slice section. And I'm going to increase the saturation on the skin by a bit. And I'm also going to drag down the density, which is going to make it slightly brighter. I'm also going to to drag down the density of the yellow to make it brighter and I'm going to make it a little bit less saturated. And if I turn this off and then on, I think that looks good. So now let's say that I want to try out something that's a little bit different while still keeping everything that we've done, just in case we need to go back to it. I can do that by going up here to show our clips and right clicking on our clip, we can see local versions here at the very top. And if you click on create new version, you're going to see this dialog box, which lets you name the version. Now that's one way of doing it, but I personally have a keybind set up for myself to quickly quickly add a new version. That's control shift A. And as you can see, it says a color grading version has been added. The only drawback of using a keybind to do it is that it doesn't open the dialog box where you can name your version, but that's completely fine because you can just do it later. So what adding a new version does is it essentially copies over all of the adjustments that you've done in your color grade so far, and it adds them to a new version that's completely separate from it. So if I right click on the clip again, you can see that here it says version one, and version two. Right now, these are essentially the same because we haven't done any extra adjustments to the second one. But if we go into this LUT node here, and if I change it to be something else, like for example, again, a phantom LUT, but this time I'm going to select ice blue. As you can see, that's going to give us slightly different color characteristics. And now let's say I want to go into the exposure node here and under the HDR wheels, I'm going to increase the exposure slightly. And I can also go into the primaries and reduce the contrast a touch. Maybe I can go into the white balance and under the primaries in the offset, I can cool it off just a bit more. And now in the node for the color slice, I might try to change the color of the phone a little bit. So that's probably going to be somewhere in the blues here. So if I drag it over to the left, we can change it to be a bit more cyan. I'm also going to make it slightly brighter and more saturated. And I'm also going to go ahead and reset the adjustments that we did for the yellows. So if I turn it off and then on, you can see that it's changing the color of the phone. So now this is our second version. And if I wanted to go back to the previous one, again, I can open up the clips and by right clicking on the clip itself, I can go to version and I can load the previous one. Or another way that you could do it is again by using a keybind. And in my case, I've set up control shift B to go to the previous version and control shift N to go to the next one. So if I hit control shift N here, I'm going to go to version two. And if I hit control shift B, it's going to load version one. So I'm just going to load version two now. And let's say that we're working on a client project and they like the look so far, but they want us to do something extra to it, like maybe adding the new film look creator. Instead of just straight up adding it to this version, I'm going to create a new one by hitting control shift A again. As you can see, it's added a new version. If we open up clips, right click, this is going to be version three for us. And now if I create a new node after the color slice, I can open up the effects grab the film look creator and drop it on there. And this doesn't look great. 
So I'm gonna select the 35 mil preset. I'm gonna drop the color blend a lot. And maybe I wanna increase the bleach bypass. Maybe I can increase the contrast a bit as well. And that's not great, but for the purposes of this video, it's gonna be fine. So again, this is our version three, but I can also go to the second version and the first one. And as you can see, these are all separate from each other, but we're not really getting rid of any of the other ones that we've done just in case we need to go back to them. But let's say that for whatever reason, the client you're working with decides that they actually like the first version that you did of the color grade a lot more than all of the other ones, and they want you to do some extra adjustments to it, you can go ahead and load that. Then you can go ahead and create a new version based on this first one. And maybe you can add a new node and drop the film look creator on that, select the 35 mil preset. And now you have version four, which is based on version one, but you still have version two and version three that are completely different. And you can just flip back and forth between all of them to make sure that you haven't lost any of the color grading progress that you've done so far, while at the same time having the freedom to adjust any of the versions however you see fit. So this is a pretty simple feature, but it can be really helpful when you're not exactly sure what direction you want to go with your color grade. And it can be especially helpful when you're working on a client project, when the client doesn't really know what they like, and they constantly want you to go back to the way that you did things before. So try it out and see if it helps. And I hope this was useful.